Muy buenas a todos, ¿cómo estáis? Hoy tenemos una entrevista con, con una amiga, ya podríamos decir, porque hemos hablado con ella en varias ocasiones y ahora trae un look muy especial, sobre todo comparado a la última vez que hablamos con ella, que fue en el Día Internacional de la Mujer. Así que voy a dar paso, no me voy a enrollar mucho porque tenemos por aquí a, a Charlotte Whistles. Charlotte, how are you? Good, good to be here again. How are you? <laughs> Fine. You look different than, like the last time we talked. I do, I do. Last time I had just shaved my hair, but I was still keeping it a secret. So the last time we spoke, I had a big red wig on and a beanie over it because I didn't know how to wear it pro properly. But uh, yeah, now the word is out. It's it's growing already. It's uh, yeah. So do you plan to um, leave it grow or will you shave again? I think so i i am kind of at this point i'm really living up to my first live show on the 23rd of october yep. so i'm thinking if at that time it looks nice i will keep it and grow it from there if i'm at a super awkward stage and it just stands up like this then i will shave it once more <laughs> and then you know let it grow over the winter i can wear beanies i can wear hoodies um, so maybe i'll shave it once more uh but yeah i'm also looking forward to growing a little mullet and doing all kinds of weird things with my hair so yeah <laughs> and and you told me last time we talked about your your show but it was in february and now uh, it's less than one month it's uh, 23rd october Uh, what, um, how are you with this concert? Because uh, uh, you've been uh, a, a long, a long time far from the stages. Yeah, I'm starting to get nervous. Um, I'm doing a lot of preparations. Uh, it's really great. We can actually rehearse here in in the Six Feet Under studio. Um, so we had a rehearsal yesterday and I'm doing like stage rehearsals and working on, you know, what the stage is going to look like, what kind of special things we're going to do during the show. We've got, you know, 20 plus new songs that have never been played live uh, to rehearse. So there's a lot of work involved, but it's really cool. And of course, it's really special since uh, joining me on stage will be. Uh, Otto, uh, Timo, and Joey, who uh, who were also in the lane. So that's, I don't know, that whole show is going to feel super uh, symbolic to perform uh, together again and to also be at the Tivoli Vredeburg, which also feels because that was the last show we played pre-pandemic. So to be at the same venue playing the first show again. And then, um, yeah, and then we've got Sofia on keys and she's doing great. So we're just very busy getting it all together and for me it's really like the event that I'm living up to now that yeah hmm. apart from the from the nervous of that of that concert uh, do you feel you're ready uh no <laughs> really no I, I don't feel I'm ready uh, I feel like uh, we need Uh, well, I mean, we're. I think we're ready musically speaking. Like, if we had to play the songs on the stage now, that'll be fine. But um, I'm still, you know, we still have to uh, work with. Uh, we just did the first rehearsal where the sound engineer was there, so he's getting to load the songs now. Um, next week, I'm sitting down with the with the light engineer and some other creatives that are going to work with the show. So that is not ready yet. Ah, okay, That okay, is okay. not ready yet. Um, but do I feel ready for it? Mentally? Spiritually? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I'm very ready. I wish it was tomorrow in that sense. <laughs> but with the things that we still need to do, I'm happy that it's not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the most important thing. Um, yeah. So uh, everyone, everyone, is doing, everyone is doing great. Like it's really, it's really cool working on it now. So as, uh, as you are telling me, Uh, you have to prepare uh, several things for the show. So, uh, will it be um, uh, a huge production show, or how will be the show? It's it is going to be. Uh, I mean, huge production. I don't want to say huge production because then I, I mean, not like Rammstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
So, uh, no, but we're definitely doing some things that I, for example, have never done before on stage. Um, and we're having a, you know, we also have a stage layout that is not necessarily a traditional stage layout. So it, it's it's definitely, we're going to make it like an event. It's not just going to be any show. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So you, you used to, to write in, in your social media when you post some pictures or whatever, um, something like, uh, if you're traveling for the show, you can see your mother the day before. So do you expect uh, many people traveling for going to your show? And well, I, I, even more, I'm in Spain. Um, yeah. How could cool you convince me to go there, for example? <laughs> Well, one thing that I could say to try to convince you is um, the things that we're doing during this show, I don't think we could take all of these things on the road. The music we could take on the road, but there's definitely elements to this show that we will do right now, uh, but that we wouldn't do like if we were ever touring in a tour bus because it's you know either too big or too complicated to do every night. So uh, it is going to be, um, yeah, it is going to be a special Uh, event and uh, I don't know how many people exactly are traveling but I did like a poll on socials and um, I think that most people that said that they were coming were actually not coming from the Netherlands so I do think that there's quite some people who are making a trip for this which is so humbling and which it's that feels really special that people are making so much effort to be there so yeah that's amazing hmm. And will be uh, uh, will uh, uh, will you have any any featureings uh, for some songs or something like that there? Uh, yeah, yeah. But can you tell us <laughs> something about them? <laughs> um, <laughs> or is I, a secret? Well, I, I will announce. Uh, I will announce soon who is going to be there. Yeah. Okay, so you will announce It's... on your socials, uh, or, or yeah. will. But all of them, or will some of them be secret featurings? Uh, no, I think I'll, I'll, who's going to be there that I will announce that there's, they are going to be there. I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And so, uh, um, we are talking now because uh, you are releasing uh, the second part of your album uh, with Napalm Records. Uh, so that means that your Patreon with the monthly songs uh, is going well, I think. Yeah, I'm still going strong. Yeah. So um, after a couple of years or maybe a little more uh, doing this Patreon stuff, um, how do you feel with that? Because this is a new lifestyle for you. Now you've been two years doing this. How do you feel? And are you happy with, uh, with this? Um... I am very happy with uh, most elements of it. One thing that I do notice is that right now with also the live uh, coming back and I've been doing a lot of collaborations also lately, um, it, it is becoming a little bit much. Um, and this is something that I have to be honest about with myself because you know I don't want to be burned out before I even do my first show. Um, so, It is becoming a bit much, but I, I do think that I can keep doing this kind of thing just with a little bit of a different approach where the song that I release every month uh, is maybe not necessarily like the final, final version of the song. Um, so, uh, yeah, this today, actually, I released song of the month number 30. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing it for 30 months by now which is a long time yeah two uh, and a half years yeah 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 and and i'm proud of that like i'm proud that i haven't broken that streak yet um and i'm happy that i've been able to you know release everything that i've released through the support of the patreon because i haven't i haven't had to ask for any advances or anything like that from like labels or um so that's that's been Uh, that's that's been really good, and the Patreon community itself is is wonderful, um, and you know gives me so much po positive energy every day. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely great. Like the the only thing that I really have to figure out for myself is 
how I want to keep doing things in a way that I don't necessarily, um, yeah, that I can also give the, give the songs a little bit more time to breathe. Yeah. Give myself a little bit more time to breathe, maybe. Yeah, I guess. And what are your goals for the future? Now the life is um, getting normal again. So I want to, uh, two things like that I want to do in the near future. The first is like the return to the stage. And then I'm, I'm talking about the one show in October, but I'm also thinking like, okay, so how am I going to do that in the future? Like, will I tour again on a regular basis? How much will I tour in the Netherlands? How much will I tour outside of the Netherlands? I, I kind of want to figure that out. Like, how is my return to the stage going, going to look? And then the second is I, I do want to make a, a more traditional album where because of course for these these two albums there's there's a reason that I called them both Tales from Six Feet Under, you know, because they're there are these songs yeah, that from the existed studio. here. It's it's uh, there's programmed work here. Um I do want to make an album at one point that, you know, uh I take those programmed drums and I give them to an actual drummer and, you know, have them recorded in the studio and the same for like all the other musical instruments and maybe think a little bit more about, you know, is this really the final shape and form of the song? And then also think about how do all of these songs fit together as an album? Because now I'm just putting my favorite songs together on a record. And so far I've been surprised with the fact that somehow they do They're very eclectic, but they do feel like albums to me. But maybe I also want to think about an album in the future where it feels uh, more cohesive. So, yeah, uh, I want to figure out what live music is going to look like. And I want to make uh, an album, a new album after this. And those are the two main things in the near future that I want to work on. Hmm. Uh, your your past uh, is a uh, heavy metal past, and and you released this second part of the album with uh, Nathan Records, uh, Tales from Sea, uh, Six Feet Under, Volume Two. And um, I would like to know if this release with Nathan Records is because you can reach with them a bigger community or a metal community that can know you uh, from your previous band from the Lane. Um, or why did you decide to to work with Napalm Records in this case? I had a good working relationship with them. I knew them well from working with Delane. And when I, uh, I, you know, when the band split, uh, of course, you know, I had a call with the label, and they were um, they were very uh, kind and understanding, and also said, you know, if if you're doing anything. So by the time that I wanted to release that vinyl it, it made made sense to me uh to to give them a call also uh yeah so and for the second it's it's the same you know i uh i like the team uh it's been actually with the first vinyl we we did have a little bit of trouble but it's not yeah. it's not their fault <laughs> and i remember last time we talked was when when they were delayed Yeah, they were delayed and then yeah, yeah. So that was that that was that was not so good. But yeah. I think that all vinyl was delayed <sighs> last year. Yes. Everyone's vinyl was delayed. Um it was more a COVID thing than a, a label thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um <laughs> so yeah, and in terms of audience, I, I don't even know if strategically it would be the best choice to be with them because like you said, they reach a metal audience and yes. A metal audience have a bigger chance of knowing who I am than a mainstream audience does. But especially with Tales from Six Feet Under Volume One, that was there was not a lot of metal on that album. So uh so I didn't necessarily choose the label because I was like, um these will cater to my audience the best. Yeah. Because it was not necessarily a typical album for either what people expect from me or what people expect from Napalm Records. Yeah. Um, but it, it wasn't necessarily my goal with that record to like um, reach the most new people or something. It was more like a celebration of, holy shit, I've been doing this for a year. I want like a physical, 
a physical product uh, to celebrate. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and your music in in this new in your own project um, is not metal. When you listen it, you are not feeling your uh, listening metal. But there are some, for example, growls in Toxic or the riff and the drums from the beginning of, of uh, Human to Ruin or the breakdown in Venus Rising. Yeah, there are some metal elements in your music. Is this your way to? approach metal music to people far from that kind of genre or this is just what you feel i'm not trying to convince anyone <laughs> to like a certain style of music like i'm not convincing metalheads to like pop music or convincing pop music uh, it's just that i like both of those things yeah and so often they will go together and in my case they will often go together within the same song um And I think on this record, even more so than the previous one, you you can hear that. Uh, like with volume one, I was still kind of holding on to my potential metal tracks because I thought, you know, this might be a delaying song. Um, now, obviously, I'm not holding on to those songs for that anymore. So now on this album, there's a few songs that feel a little bit more symphonic, like you, you mentioned Human to Ruin or maybe even The Phantom Touch or... Like there's more songs that are kind of in that zone. Yeah. Um, so maybe for people who do know me from that, uh, they 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 might find something there that they recognize. Uh, but in general, I think it's still quite eclectic. Mm -hmm. I would. Say. Yeah. So for your for your so uh, next month, um, have you? investigate or something like that about uh, who will be your audience if they are like new fans from your new era in from your own project or are, are there fans from the lane who know who knew you and now they want to see you live i don't know i should ask <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i know that you know i know that a lot of patrons are coming and for them it's kind of it's kind of both because a lot of them became patrons when I was with Delane and they knew me from Delane, but have gone on to appreciate the work that I've been doing after. I think that there's a lot of people like that. I don't think that I've been doing this. Well, I did, you know, I got a few mainstream playlists last, yeah. last month, but I don't think that necessarily someone from a mainstream audience who has never heard of me before, I don't think that I will necessarily... I I don't feel like I've done enough to reach a lot of people outside of that yet. But I don't know. I don't know. We will see. I will ask. I will ask. <laughs> you have Instagram polls, so you can do the same like, like yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you did before. Um, and just before the end, uh, well, I remember last... last in, uh, No, not the last interview, but uh, one of the interviews we did, um, you were very sensitive uh, because of the situation you had with Lane. And now they are they are back with a new singer. Um, I would like to know how do you feel with uh, with this situation now? Now you are uh, you are seeing they are back with a new singer. How are you um, living their return now? I'm trying not to engage with it too much, honestly. Um, I've seen positive responses about it, which I think is good. Um, uh, but I, I do try to keep some distance and just focus on what I'm doing rather than, you know, checking that out because I still don't feel like that would make me happier per se. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, And when when you are rehearsing with the with your with your friends musicians or whatever you want to to call them, um, do you remember that some part of your time when you were in the band or something like that? That's it, that feeling you are playing in a band. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. It is um, it is very different and very, very nice to be making music together again, because uh, I, I've been kind of doing 
all of this like a hermit down yeah. in the basement for yeah. a while and to be here and then to be here with also with folks that I've been playing with for so long with friends that I've been playing with for so long um that that is that is a wonderful experience and it feels really um yeah it feels really yeah it feels like home it's it's good that's that's nice so well uh charlotte thank you for your time uh it's been a pleasure again and well uh everybody you know that uh, 23rd uh, october you can go to charlotte first solo concert if i'm not wrong And it will be awesome. Full production is uh, Ramstein and, and her. So you know, you know. And uh, well, uh, do you have a last message for the people uh, for convince them to go into your show from Spain or from whatever? Oh, I. Uh, it's going to be great. But I mainly want to thank everyone just for um, you know for checking out what I've been doing for keeping up with it and. Uh, And I hope that they enjoy the new songs. And if people are making the travel, that is so special to me. Like, I don't take that lightly. And um, yeah, I hope to see everyone soon, be it in October or be it maybe later on the road. Uh, it would be wonderful. Let's see. Um, I don't know if I, if I could go, but if you come to Spain, I'll be there for sure. <laughs> Perfect. So Charlotte, again, thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.